Welcome to the Pastor's Study, a program designed to help you answer your questions. You can call, email, or text your questions to us, and our panel of pastors will give you answers from the Word of God. What is God's will? What happens when you die? Does God really care about me? If you have questions like these, then pull up a chair and join us in the Pastor's Study. Hi, welcome to Pastor's Study. I'm Pastor Washington of Whole Man Ministries. I will be your host for the evening. And we are going to discuss a topic that most people have questions about. That is worry versus faith. However, before we do that, let me introduce to you our panel here. Let me start with Pastor Kendall. I'm Paul Kendall, and I'm Pastor Christ Family Church in Winston-Salem. All Nations Evangelica Church, Greensboro, North Carolina. My name is Rick Brooks. My lovely wife, Shelly, and I pastor a free church in High Point, North Carolina. Good to be with you this evening. Well, praise God. I'm Pastor Barry Washington of Whole Man <clears throat> Ministries in North Car- Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And we are happy to be with you today. We know that there must be some questions out there regarding faith oh. and worry. So we're going to ask that you would call in or check us out on Facebook, Global Television Network. You can look us up or you can email it to us at www.gtvnetwork.us. That, that again is www.gtvnetwork.us. Or you can call in live with your question. We look forward to hearing from you. So let's start, gentlemen. Let's begin with um, worry versus faith. Is it a sin to worry? Does the Bible say anything about that? Is, there, is it a sin to worry? Pastor Kidd? Well, it's, it's, it's hard to put it in the category of sin. I, you know, Jesus said... Don't worry about today, you know, or tomorrow. Tomorrow's got enough worry for itself, so, um, or enough trouble for itself, he said. So even Jesus, that actually comforts me to know that Jesus said that you will have trouble (laughs) in this life, but whether or not to worry about it, I think that um, it depends on your definition of worry. I mean, if it is being concerned about someone or something, I think that's a natural human response to be concerned about something. But to get to the point where it's worry, where you feel like you're going to change the outcome depending on how much worry or wringing of your hands or think time that you put into it instead of trusting God, then I would say that that's certainly outside of God's will and anything outside of God's will is worry. I guess I'm just trying to find a balance, not to put hardship or heaviness on somebody that's just worried about something um, that's one thing, but to think that you're going to change the circumstances by worrying instead of trusting God or having faith in God's word, then I would say that you're certainly out of his will, which would be sin. I see you, you basically hit upon a scripture in Matthew 6, 25. Perhaps uh, Pastor Ping Pong can read that for us. Okay, Matthew 6, 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall mm-hmm. eat, or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Then verse 26 says, Behold the fowls of the air, behold the fowls of the air, for they uh, sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than uh, uh, they... I think when you look at this, this is Jesus' if I should use the word command, he's telling us as believers mm-hmm. to not worry. Yeah. You know, uh, first Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added. Yeah. What is worry? To be unduly concerned about, <clears throat> you know, whatever. He asked the question, he said, by worrying, do you add a cubit or mm. an inch to your height? or a, a head to your head and all that. So you see that the Lord wants us to be wholly trusting in him. The opposite, when you, when you and I worry, it means that we don't trust mm-hmm. the Lord. Yeah. You know? And yes, 
I think it is a sin. A sin to worry. It's a sin to worry, especially as believers. Because if you, if you, you and I have a, can you look at a little, ba a little baby? When the baby is in the arms of the parent, that baby doesn't worry. The baby knows that. Right. And Jesus said, unless you become like little children, mm -hmm. we shall not enter into the kingdom of God. So you have, when you are worrying, you cease to be a little child. <laughs> you begin to become an adult who is thinking that I can do it all by myself. So you are worrying. But when we become like little children, we totally rely on Christ. So yes, worry is sin. That's a pretty good way of putting it. We could uh, certainly relate to that father and child mm -hmm. uh, relationship mm -hmm. where the child really doesn't worry. Mm -hmm. However, yeah. Pastor Brooks, you got something to add to that. Well, I was thinking about the question, you know, is it sin? <laughs> and when Jesus says, don't worry or do not, all we're missing is thou shalt not yeah. worry. It, it is a sin. We don't like to talk about it a whole lot, guys, but it really is sin to worry because sin is sort is I mean worry is definitely the opposite of faith mm -hmm. and as Christians we're not called to worry I know we accept that a whole lot and we deal with that I was thinking about a verse of scripture I found over in Matthew 14 1 and Jesus said don't let your heart or do not let your heart be troubled mm -hmm. ed right. troubled mm -hmm. he said don't live in trouble a troubled mind, a troubled heart, troubled spirit. You know, we're supposed to live in peace. We're not supposed to worry. We're supposed to trust God. We're not supposed to worry. We Christians, we know the word of God, or maybe we don't know the word of God, and that's why we worry. You know, remember, pastors, the Bible says that a man is blessed or a woman is blessed if our mind is stayed mm -hmm. on him. Mm -hmm. And I have found out through my own personal life that when I have a tendency to worry, and I, I want you to know I'm not perfect, I do go into worry. But you know the thing about growing in grace is that you recognize it. And you say, you know what, hold up. Everybody stop the boat, stop the bus, not doing this. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna lay it down. I'm gonna trust God. I'm gonna walk by faith. I'm gonna find me a verse of scripture because the word of God is power, power to my mind. And if I can power up my mind, I can beat worry in the name of Jesus. Yes, amen. Praise God, amen. Pastor. Yeah. Pastor Brooks, you really told us how we could uh, defeat worryation or how do I come out of worryation? And one scripture you gave us was uh, whose mind is stayed on him, he will give us perfect peace. So I'm gonna ask the other pastors, perhaps they're if there's somebody who's watching now and saying, look, I, I've, I've worried about my child. I, mm. I've worried about my relationship. I, I've worried about my spouse. What can I do to give me some peace? What, what can I do to overcome this worryation? Uh, could you give us some suggestions or some scriptures that may help them a little bit? Pastor Ping Pong? I think he, he gave Isaiah 26, verse 3. You know, that will keep him in perfect peace, whose mm. mind is stayed on thee, mm -hmm. because he has trusted in you. So the key word there, trust. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. When we resort to our own understanding, then worry comes in, because worry goes with resorting to self. When your focus is self, then you worry. Mm -hmm. You know, in fact, the Matthew, the one that we read in Matthew, Matthew has a lot because towards the end of it, Jesus said, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for its, mm -hmm. the things of itself. Sufficient right. unto every day is the evil thereof. Yeah. And then before then, he said, But this is what I want you to seek. This is what I want you to concern yourself with. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So if this word abides in our hearts, and our main focus is seeking the kingdom of God. That gives us comfort. Mm -hmm. Now, I wake up every morning and I look at the birds. Suddenly all the birds come. You have the rains, the bluebirds. They all settle on the grass and they are eating. And they never, you don't hear any of them worrying. They know <laughs> the food is already there. Yeah. And the Lord said that we are more important than the birds. Mm -hmm. And yet the birds come and food is always ready. Every day when they come, food yes. is ready. They find something to eat. Yeah. And you and I, if we cease from worrying, we'll find out that the food that, or whatever we are looking for, is not too far away from us. The Lord just wants us to focus on Him. Mm. Oh, praise God. Anybody? 
Yeah, I, I think if you think about the purpose, what's the motive or the purpose behind worry? It's I'm concerned about the way things are. I'm scared about the way they're going to turn out, and I don't want them to turn out bad, so I'm worrying. Mm -hmm. So my motive is I don't want things to be the way that I think they are. So worry, I guess you could say, would be, and I think it's already been said, is the opposite of faith. You know, faith in God's word, which is always true. Isaiah 55, 11, I love uh, that scripture because it says, this is God speaking, it says, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return from me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing that I sent it. That's a pretty strong statement. For God to say that my word will always, always work and it will always prosper whatever it's spoken into. So that's not just Isaiah 55, 11. That's the entirety mm -hmm. of yeah. Scripture. True. So if I wanted to know with great confidence that I was investing my concern in one or the other, one would be worry, which would almost be like magical thinking to think if I worry or wring my hands enough about this, I can change the circumstances, which that doesn't work. Mm. Or I can put my faith in what God's word says. I can speak God's word. I can put my confidence and my trust in God's word and know that it will not return void mm -hmm. and it will prosper in whatever thing it's mm. spoken into. Yeah. That is a guarantee. Just like two plus two always, always, always. equals four, whether it's <laughs> raining, snowing, whether you're happy, mad, or sad, two plus two equals four. But we don't have a problem with that. Why do we have a problem with God saying, my word will always work? Yeah. So instead of worry, why don't you find something that God's word says addressing that situation and put your think time, your energy, your emotions in trusting God's word, knowing that it won't return void. Oh, That's I good. know that the viewers are getting something out of this because... A lot of people deal with this particular uh, situation, worrying, and I think the pastor's hit, it, hit the nail on the head. Uh, pastor Brooks want to add something to this. Yeah, I certainly agree with the pastors here. Um, I love the Word of God, you know. Uh, I mean, anytime you are in a quandary or you just, you don't know what to do, you can go right to the Word of God, mm -hmm. and if you just check it out, if you, if you just check out of the world and check into God's Word, you'll find something that will get you through. I love the story of Joshua. I love Joshua as a, as a character. And here's what the Lord says to him. Have I not commanded you? There it is again, guys. Mm -hmm. No matter where I see this attribute of worry, you know, and we know it doesn't come from heaven. We know it comes from another world, right? And the Bible is telling us over and over, wait a minute, stop where you are. Listen, you've got to check out of worry. You've got to get away from it. You've got to rebuke it. You've got to refrain from it. You've got to change your mind. As Pastor Kendall was giving us some, some uh, steps, some practical steps of how to overcome that. I can't get any more deeper, I think, than the Word of God. Listen to what was commanded to Joshua. I've commanded you, be strong and courageous. I don't know how in the world you can worry if you're going to be courageous, if, you, if you're going to be courageous, you're going to set all of your energy on faith and God can do this. And I'm looking for an answer and I'm fasting and I'm praying and I know that I'm going to make it through this. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to let it defeat me. And then he says, do not be afraid. And of course, mm. fear is always combating worry all the time. I mean, we're uh, married to worry, but faith is always combating fear. And then the Bible says this, for the Lord will be with you. I love this, this phrase, wherever you go. You mean he'll be with me if I go through worry? He'll be with you if you're in worry. He'll be with you if you have to go through fear. No matter where we <coughs> are, guys, you that are watching this broadcast tonight, you might be worried about your bills. You might be worried about your children. You might be worried about your job. You might be worried about the future. You might be worried about the world but I've got good news for you. We've got good news for mm, you. Amen. The word of God mm. will set our minds free mm. to trust him and to block into a place to where we are not fearful, but we are courageous and we can make it. Praise God, praise God. Amen. You're watching Pastor Study on Global Television Network. 
And if, you know, something we said has, has touched you or encouraged you, we ask that you be a part of this ministry and make a donation. And if you would, please send that donation to 300 Highway 68 South, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27409. Uh, look, in order for us to get this word out and get it ar around the world, we need your help. We need you to be a participant, not a spectator, but a participant because you are part of the kingdom. Oh, Can so I, we were talking about the topic. The topic was worry and faith. Now let's switch can, over. Can I, can I add something before we... Okay, go ahead, Pastor Pink. In Isaiah chapter 48, verse 18, there is something there because most of the time the worry is sometimes, majority, I think, centered on these material things, mm -hmm. you know. And even in the material things, look at what the Lord said to the children of Israel from verse 17. He said, Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teaches thee to profit, which leads thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Now, the verse 18, he said, Oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandments, then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. So that when we rely totally upon the Lord, no worry. He says we shall have peace mm. that will flow through us like mm. a river. And our righteousness will be like the waves mm. of the sea. Our righteousness will attract people. Because they'll be wondering, how is it that it is, we're all around here and you don't seem to, well, you tell them that it is the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there is something about not being worried about anything when you and I rest in the bosom of mm -hmm. the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. There is this peace that passes all understanding. Mm. Flows like a river. Isaiah 48, verse 17 and 18. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I feel the peace even as you were talking about it. <laughs> I said, man, that's calming right there. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to the other end of the spectrum. We were talking about worry. We were talking about worry versus faith. So now let's talk about faith. What does the Bible say? about mm. faith. Brother Kendall. Yeah, it gives the definition in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. I'll read it. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word. Mm -hmm. That connects with Isaiah 55, 11. My word will not return void. Uh, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So if you had um, something that you had to pay for and you had an extremely wealthy friend and your friend said, it's $1,000, I'll cover it for you. I'm going to take care of it for you. You would probably be relieved and feel like, my buddy's going to pay for it. I have great faith in my friend. He always comes through. He's going to take care of this bill for me. You would have faith in your friend. How much more should we have faith in God who mm -hmm. created everything, Come on yes. including probably the other person or the thing that you're worried about, and he created that person or that thing, mm -hmm. and how much more should we put our faith in God that created the, the world and know that he's going to take care of it for us? I think, I think the real crux of the whole thing is, do I really believe in God? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do I really believe what his word says? Do I believe that'll work for me? Right, mm -hmm. right. Well, praise God. That's a good one. Do I, do I believe? Well, look, you're watching Global Television Network. We're going to take a small break here and I uh, want to show you something, give you a little bit more information about us. Here we go.
Yes, let me share with you a little bit more about us, okay? Our mission is to connect our local community while reaching global. I mean, don't you want to go global? Mm -hmm. And we do that by uh, creative concepts in programming and broadcast. We offer several ways to capture your unique concept and bring your broadcast vision to reality. I know you want to do that. Bring your vision to reality. I'm going to tell you some of the things that you can produce. You can produce live programs, infomercials, commercials, talk shows, sports programs, music, religious, uh, religious programs, indoor, outdoor events, or ESL programs, education, and much, much more. Uh, what can you broadcast? Good question. You could broadcast uh, uh, sports, uh, music, talk shows, commercials, infomercials, cooking shows. I like a little bit of cooking. Uh, med uh, medical programming, book shows, and so much more. So look, please contact us. We're a global television network. You can write us at 300 Highway 68 South. Greensboro, North Carolina, 27409. Or you could call us, 336-575-6577. Let's make your, uh, your production go global. Mm -hmm. And not only global, but let's bring that vision to life, okay? Well, look, we were talking about faith. Um, we, you know, Pastor Kendall gave us a pretty good analogy of that, and I see standing by, Pastor Brooks, you would like to add to that? Yeah, I wanna go ahead and bring us right back to Hebrews 11. Um, but we miss this first word, don't we guys? I don't know why we do, but we do. Now, mm -hmm. <laughs> now faith. I, I, I've told the church before, you can have tomorrow faith, next year faith, you can have when I'm in trouble faith, you can, you can have when I'm worrying faith, or you can have now faith. You can have faith that operates and functions in the now moment. That's right, the moment that worry knocks on your door, you can have so much faith in God and His Word that worry begins to dissipate. I, I think many times we spend so much time focusing on the wrong things and we miss the right thing. Mm -hmm. We focus on worry and mm. fear and what's gonna happen, mm. like Pastor Kendall said, am I gonna be able to pay my bills and, and, and my job's not working well and what's going on with the economy and, and things are not going on right at church, and whatever it is, because you know why? That's just life, man, that's life. That's why we're here on the planet. But God gave us the weapons and the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to pulling down strongholds and that stronghold of worry or fear, that stronghold of what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen to me in the future. We don't have to focus our attention on that because we know who holds tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? That's right. We know who's given us a plan and a future. What we need to do is we need to war against worry. We need to pull that stronghold down now mm. because the Bible says that we can have now faith and its substance can't really see it. We don't really understand it. But all we do is speak in the name of Jesus. And I'm telling you, folks, by experience, every one of these pastors could tell you by their experience, we've all faced worry. Mm -hmm. You can't pastor a church mm -hmm. and not worry. You can't have a pastor's family and not worry. You can't just be living in America or around the world somewhere, folks. Everybody goes through worry. But faith... Mm. Faith is the power that will absolutely disarm worry. It'll take it out. It'll dissolve it. And we will begin to focus on greater things, that our God's greater than the problem, that, that, that God's word is going to explode this problem, this trouble coming against me. And I'm not going to worry about it anymore. In fact, I'm going to worship. In fact, I'm going to read. In fact, I'm going to pray. I'm going to find somebody and minister to them as opposed to me worrying about what's going on with me. I'm going to focus my attention and my energy on somebody else who's going through the problem that I'm going through and give them a solution. Praise How about that? God, brother. Hey, hey that'll preach. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we know we got another pastor who want to put something in on that. Pastor Ping Pong. Amen. Amen. Now, there is, we have to also understand that when you talk about faith, Faith has three 
brothers, or I'll, say, I'll call them quadruplets. You have faith, waiting, patiently, mm. and trust. These four go together. You cannot have faith if you are impatient. You cannot have faith if you have not learned to wait. You cannot have faith if you don't trust. If you look through the book of Psalm, you see God saying, wait. Wait on the Lord. Wait mm -hmm. on the Lord. And David said, I waited patiently on mm -hmm. the Lord. We have to wait. If you don't have that wait, your, I mean, your, your faith, because faith is the substance of something you are hoping for. So if you are hoping for that thing, you have to learn to be patient mm -hmm. and to wait for it. Mm -hmm. It is also the evidence of things not seen. You've not seen it yet. You don't want to see it like Thomas before you believe. Mm. You want to wait for it. Mm. And now if you look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38, it says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Why do we draw back? Why do we worry? Because so many of us are impatient. We can't wait. We just want the thing. In fact, we've, we treat God like a hamburger uh, <laughs> joint. We have to get it, get it now, get it now. Yeah. No, 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 no. Because from there, now, they said, now, this is, the just shall live by faith. When they said that, the people will start, what, then what is faith? So now he comes to chapter 11. He says, now this is what, what? Faith is. Mm -hmm. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. I had the church by the grace of God. I, had, I still have it. It took me 20 years when people were saying, why don't you sell the building? Why don't you do that? Because our mortgage was. But I had faith in the Lord. And my faith mm -hmm. was couched in waiting, in patience, yeah. mm -hmm. and trusting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as I waited on the Lord, patience, even when people were leaving and abandoning mm. the church and they were leaving, I said, if everybody, everybody leaves and there was only one person, <laughs> I am still going to wait. And you know what the Lord did? 20 years after, he brought somebody from where I don't know. And the person came, took a pen and paper, wrote a check for hundreds of thousands and paid off the bill. Faith. Wait. And if you look at the, in chapter 11, all those people, it says some of them, they died without receiving a, receiving a promise. They died, they had faith. They died without receiving the promise. Mm -hmm. But they were looking for a place made without human hands. Yes. So we have to learn how to faith, uh, wait. Because if you don't learn how to wait, you'll be worrying. If you, don't, if you are not patient, you'll be worrying. Impatience and not waiting and not trusting breeds worry and that yeah. is the reason why so many of us worry because we are not patient mm -hmm. we don't wait mm -hmm. and we don't trust but faith has to incorporate all of that faith Amen. incorporates waiting patience and trusting oh Amen. as you can see we have the cream <laughs> of the crop on this panel here buddy <laughs> look we're going to ask you again to email your your questions you can call in live if you like and ask a question the phone number is 336-575-6577. Oh, we, we got some great questions here. I, we're dealing with this topic, worry versus faith. So let's go back to faith for a moment. We talked about what the Bible says, what faith <clears throat> is. Now, we have somebody sitting on the fence. Somebody's watching and saying, look, how do I increase my faith? I, I mean, how do I get stronger faith? I, mm -hmm. You know, I've been wanting to, you know, believe God. I, I struggle to believe God. I, I feel like I'm like that man who came to Jesus. Mm -hmm. I believe, but help thou my unbelief. unbelief. Yeah. So pastors, yeah. can you help somebody out there? Pastor Brooks? Um, sure. Uh, I want to give you something. Maybe you write this down. It's just really simple. And that is worry is my war. Faith is my focus. Mm. You see, we make a choice between those. And when we talk about faith, we can't get away from the house of God. We can't get away from a pastor feeding me, being my shepherd. We can't get away from fellowshipping with the saints and sharing in 
and sharpening one another. We can't get away from that. Because why? The Bible says this. Faith comes by hearing, Romans 10, 17, and hearing by the Word, the word of God. And I've heard this all my life. Oh, Pastor, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the, bath, the Bible in the bathroom. I know you will. I know you will. But I promise you, it's going to be a mixed message. Are you listening to me? It's, it's going to be a mixed message. I'm going to read it with my kids. It's going to be a mixed message. There's, there's nothing like taking that concentrated moment and coming to God's house and worshiping with the saints and giving and, and sharing and everybody praying together and being family. And then God's man, God's woman standing up under the anointing of the Holy Spirit saying, you know what? Here's the word for you. And you're sitting there on go. You've got your pen in your hand, your paper, your iPad, whatever, and you're taking notes. And you're looking for, listen, the whole message of the pastor is not going to be for you. I don't know if anybody's ever told that, but that is not what happens mm -hmm. in church service. But there is something in that man or woman's mouth that's a golden nugget for you. And it's probably going to have to do with building your faith. Amen. Because you're going you're gonna to face worry, you're going to face fear, you're going to face trepidation, you're going to face questioning, you're going to face all kinds of things. And when you do, the Bible says that His Word is what overcomes all of that. Fear and worry. There's power in the Word of God. And when you receive, you know what I found out? When I stop worrying, I now can clearly focus on God's Word. Mm. Come on, let's just be honest. Amen. Many times we go to prayer and we're in a prayer meeting and we're just there, aren't we? Because we're still worried about our bills. We're still focused. We're praying. We're speaking in tongues, but we're still worried. We're not focused. And worrying is my war. All right, I've got that. Now I need to shift gears and go to faith. Mm -hmm. Now everything's got to be, I'm trusting you, God. I'm believing you, God. I need a word from you, God. Encourage me, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Somebody... Build me up in my faith so that I can overcome what I'm facing. Mm. Oh, man, wow. that's, that's powerful. So you see, uh, what Pastor Brooks talked about faith and he talked about fear, early he said that we forget a word sometimes, that one word in the beginning that says now. Well, I like to add to that that the word after faith is is. Mm -hmm. So we got two verbs, my God, and mm -hmm. faith is in the middle of it. Yeah. So that means you, 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 I mean, in your beginning and uh -huh. in your end, God said, I am the author and I uh, am finisher. the finisher. My yes. God, don't you want God to finish it? Amen. Pastor Kendall. Well, Pastor Rick, he <laughs> said it plainly. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. The problem is a lot of Christians want to bypass learning mm. the Word of God. <laughs> Come on. That's so the, the enemy is the great deceiver. That's, mm -hmm. that's his, his MO. I mean, that's how he operates. Mm -hmm. The very first question in the Bible, the very first question was Satan saying to Eve, hath God said? Did he really say that? It's interesting. I don't know of many times where Satan, if at all, says God did not say that. He just puts a spin on it. A question. Did he really say, did mm -hmm. he really say, if you eat of that tree, you'll surely die? Oh, Eve, right. <laughs> come on. You will not surely die. So the enemy is a deceiver. All right, so I'm going to maybe meddle a little bit. Satan is a master at taking statements of principle, God's truth from the church, mm -hmm. spinning it, and, and deceiving a person into think that there were speaking in faith when they're really not. Okay, here's an example. I, let's say I'm a person that makes $2,000 a month, but I don't have a budget. I haven't gone through Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University and right. I spend $2,500 every month. Okay, so I'm going $500 a month in the hole. Now I'm thousands of dollars behind. I come home, I find a notice on my door. They're gonna kick me out. I go in my house, the lights are off, the water's mm -hmm. off. And I remember what I heard in church. I am the head and not the tail. I am mm -hmm. above and not beneath. Yes. All right? I am I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Right. Now, next month, I'm going to make 2000 and keep spending 2500 mm -hmm. Okay, so I would like to add a fifth child to your quartet <laughs> and make it a quintet. Quintet, okay. And that fifth child would be obedience. Amen. I, I can't keep violating 
one right. of God's principles mm -hmm. and then quote some chant and I think I'm speaking right. by mm -hmm. faith mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. and then wonder why God is not working yeah, right. for That's me. That's true. So that fifth child it's is obedience. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so I actually, you know, from my experience in counseling with people, I, I find that's the biggest sure. <laughs> obstacle with Christians when it comes to faith is they're, they're speaking, you know, words, it's rhetoric, but it's not founded in mm -hmm. God's word or they're, they're continuing to violate a principle of God and expecting because they're saying all of these things that they've learned to say in faith, that right. God is going to wink at their disobedience and make the trouble right. go away. Mm -hmm. No, that's why faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Right. And mm -hmm. again, God's word never returns void. So if I am uh, in, uh, drawing hardship, darkness, chaos into my life, mm. I think I would find out what does God's word say about sure. this? I'm going to be obedient to it, obedient yeah. to it, and I'm going to have 100% solid faith that my circumstances, God is going to turn my circumstances around, not because I just chanted words, but because I am. What did Jesus say? If you love me, you will Keep my word. obey Keep my commandments, commandments right. and do what God's word says, yeah. and that is operating in faith. Amen. I mean, I, hey, I like how you explained that, and you added another child to the four. <laughs> so you, 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 you got me feeling that I need to probably do the same. So I'm going to add a child. Uh, Faith without works. works. So I'm adding works. Another child, what's that, septuplic or something six. like that? We're up to six. So, you know, you six got to go and do something. You can't spend $2,500 2500 when you're making two. So, you know, faith without works is Dead. 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 Sure. So I'm coming back to, uh, we got uh, everybody? Just a pastor. Pastor mm -hmm. Oh, go away. Okay. Now, the other thing also we have to, that also gets us off track is our focus again. You know, Jesus Christ has to always be our focus. Amen. We get into trouble mm -hmm. so many times mm -hmm. because we are looking at what the other person got, what the person this, and making a compar comparing ourselves the Bible says, when you compare yourself with each, to each other, we have become fools. We are not to compare ourselves to each other. Oh, Hollywood people, these people are, if the Hollywood people are making so much, well, why me, the seven on God, I'm not, no, 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 we are not to. We are, not, we are in competition with no one. Right. Our focus should be Christ. Look at what the word of God says. It says, wait on the Lord. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Don't fret. Mm. Don't become anxious. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as a green herb. Trust in the Lord, do good, so yes. that thou, thou shalt dwell in the land, and yes. verily thou shalt be fed. Verily thou shalt be fed. That's what God says, Psalm 37. Verily thou shalt be fed. Your need will be supplied. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ <laughs> is yea and amen. Yes. You know, Amen. but how can I increase my faith? How can I build my faith? First, the question is, do you know the Lord as your personal Savior? Mm. And if, if, if yes, are you totally and wholly yielded to him? Because that is key. Mm -hmm. You have to be wholly surrendered to him. He has to be your all in all. And when he becomes your all in all, and for that love, John chapter 15, if you abide in me and my word abide in you. So the key is abiding. If you abide in him, take a big barrel in your house and jump into that barrel and let somebody cover it up. And let a visitor come. Will they see you? No. Because you're in the barrel. You are lost in the barrel. The same way, we have to jump into Christ mm -hmm. and be yeah. lost in him. Yeah. Once you and I are lost in him, that is key, our faith. Yeah. And so we cease worrying or thinking about what I need. Rather, he in whom you are indwelling who is also indwelling you, supplies your every need, your faith increase. Does it mean there will be no trial? Oh, many. But the trials that will come builds your faith. Every trial that comes to you and I builds faith. Mm -hmm. Every trial, it builds faith. It makes us stronger as we come out of it. So how do I increase in faith? When the trials come, laugh at it hmm. and patiently go through it hmm. and trust God. And when he brings you out of one, that becomes a reference point for the next one right. that comes. And you begin climbing. And that's how faith grows in you and I. Praise God. Man, that's, that's awesome here. 
Look, you're watching Global Television Network. So here, learn a little bit about us here. said global reaching around the world global mm. and um, look why don't you phone in you could make your broadcast vision come to life right here perhaps you want to do a talk show or a sports event outside or commercial or whatever you like to do we could do it here please give us a call at 336-575-6576 Seven, seven. Or write us at Global Television Network, 300 Highway 68 South, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27409. Mm -hmm. Or catch us on the web at www.gtvnetwrk.us. That is www.gtvnetwork.us. U S or look us up on Facebook, Global Television Network. Many of you on Facebook anyway. Check us out. So look, we're going to move a little forward here. Um, we were talking about that. I, I got a question here. Uh, what does the Bible says about fear and faith? You know, what does the Bible says about that? We know there is a scripture out there that says God has not mm -hmm. given me the fear, spirit fear, fear. of fear, mm -hmm. but of power. My yeah. God, man, love and a sound mind. Mm -hmm. Help us out, pastors. Pastor Kendall. Yeah, I, I've heard that the uh, acronym of fear is false evidence appearing real. You know, it's false, but it appears real. Again, that would be the enemy's deception yeah. that um, what you're seeing is real when it's not. You know, the whole, the whole definition of faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of, not, of, of things not seen. Doesn't that al almost seem backwards? I mean, evidence <laughs> is evidence because you can see it. Um, so how is it that, that that works? You know, it's the opposite of fear. And again, it's believing in God's word. And I, I just cannot say it enough. You can't have faith in God's word. You can't base your thoughts your decisions and your feelings on god's word if you don't know god's word and um, you know we we can spend hours doing this on a on a phone and if there is a bottom to facebook i've never found it it just <laughs> scrolls <Yeah>. and scrolls <laughs> and i don't know about your house but sometimes i look around we can have five people sitting in the living room and all five of us have these devices and we can invest such great time mm -hmm. in in you know investing in what other people are saying and doing why you know maybe maybe we should you know read our bibles on our phones where we can scroll but why is it that we don't invest the time it's because and I, i've already mentioned this before it's because there's something this that doesn't fully believe i mean if i knew for absolute sure that this was going to work, I would, I would have an insatiable appetite for it. I couldn't get enough. And so I just want to encourage you uh, to add to your faith. And, to, and by the way, fear is the counterfeit. Mm -hmm. And you don't know a counterfeit yeah. until you know the truth. Yeah. We had a lady in our church years ago that worked for the bank, and she went to counterfeit school. It was a week-long uh, program. And she said the whole time that she was there, the entire time, they never showed them one counterfeit bill. Oh, man. The entire week, all wow. they did was study real ones, fives, tens, twenties, fifties, hundreds, or whatever. 
they actually sat one day for the whole day with, I think it was a 50 or $100 bill in their hand, just to know how it feels. So that when they're on the job and somebody tries to pass a counterfeit and they're counting, whoa, something mm. didn't feel right about that mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. All right, so that would be my metaphor for fear. Mm. It's the deception. And you won't be able to spot it unless you know the truth of God's word because that is what is real, the evidence of what is not seen. Thank you, Pastor. Pastor Brooks. Yeah, um, wow, what a great explanation. Um, you know, I can't get away from investment. I heard that word investing, you know, into the word of God, You're investing your time in your phone, Facebook, hours. We're fussing about the pastor speaking 20 minutes on Sunday morning. Ooh. And no, really, I mean, we, we, we really got to get down to talking about what the real problem is. And, you know, I was thinking about my own personal life and how I accounted the man of God a great investment into me. And I'm not wasting my time. In fact, I'm investing my life. Mm -hmm. As I'm listening to the word, he's telling me how to overcome. He's telling me how to win. He's, he's telling me how to keep following Christ. He's telling me how to build my faith. He's telling me how to pray. He's telling me how to, he's, you see, as I'm, I'm growing through this thing. And I found that more people today, how can I say this? Maybe just use a little street language here. And, <laughs> you know, I, I can have a jack leg mechanic in my car is going to make it. I mean, we, we, we're going to put her down the road. We're going to find somebody. We're going to get, I can have a jack leg banker. He's not going to ruin my life. I might have a bad financial deal there. I, I can have a jack leg realtor. I might not get the house. But let me say this to you and say it to you strong. You can't afford to have a jack leg preacher. <laughs> you can't afford to have a jack leg preacher. That's right. Somebody's got to be there with a call of God and anointing of God on their life and ready, ready to give you what you need. And you now have to sit on the other side of that seat and be ready to invest your life into that word because he's going to help you understand how to overcome fear. He's going to help you walk in faith and build your faith. He's going to teach you, as Pastor Sam Pong, Ping Pong said, how to recognize and not be deceived by a spirit of worry. But we don't invest, we don't value. Many times, church is a thing, you know, we're looking to get through it, we want to see what we can eat, we want to see how many, you know, programs we can get involved in. Those things are important. They're very, very important. But listen to me, they're not as important. And any of these pastors who've been pastoring for a while will let you know, if you're going to remain, you're going to have to have the Word of God. You're going to have to have a teacher. You're going to have to have somebody who's investing in you, and you're sitting there investing in that word, and then you will learn how to overcome fear. Amen. That's painful. Yeah. So when you look at First John chapter 4 and verse 18, I believe, it says there is no fear in love. Mm. Perfect love mm -hmm. casts out all oh, fear. fear. But let me come back again to Psalm 37, because there, when, you, when we... Invest in this, fear goes away. Yeah. Listen to what he says. He said, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. I mean, this it doesn't take away fear from you and worry from you. I don't know what else. And then he goes, he said, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. You see, it's all on you and I. We have to trust, we have to commit. And the reason why we have fear. It's because we have not trusted and we have not committed. And we fear, we don't, we don't know the end game. Why should I trust? I don't know what will come out of it. But yours is to just be like a little child. Like a baby that you carry or your son that you carry in your hand. As long as he or she is in the hand of mama, he's not wriggling and saying, ah, no, he's just relaxed. That newborn babe. And we as children, I love the way it comes to verse 6. He says, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. And that's the key. Rest. We are not resting in the Lord. Mm. We are not resting in the Lord. When we rest in the Lord, fear will go away. Mm -hmm. When you rest in the Lord, mm -hmm. abide in me, Jesus Christ said. So we are not resting. And if you don't rest in the Lord, you become restless. Mm -hmm. 
when you don't rest in the Lord, you become restless. So rest in the Lord. And not yes. only rest, yes. but also wait patiently for him. So I'm going to add even to my quadruplets who have become <laughs> quintuplets now one more, a septuplet. Rest. So rest in the Lord. Rest. Wait patiently for you. Be on the fan. Wait fret not thyself. <laughs> don't worry. He said, fret not thyself. Don't be anxious. Fret not thyself of him who prospereth in his way. Mm. Don't fret. Mm. Don't look at Hollywood. Don't no. look at... No, no, no. Don't fret. Say, fret not thyself of him who prospereth in his way because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger. Forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. That's what the Lord says. Rest. And that's the key word. When we rest in the Lord, fear goes away. Yes. When we rest in the Lord, worry goes away. When we rest in the Lord, doubt goes away. Because we have chosen to rest, we let doubt and all those things go. Rest. Hmm. Well, as you can see, we started off with four. We got seven. <laughs> <laughs> We're building a sermon. And so in order to have a new beginning, we need eight. We need eight. Yeah. <laughs> We're, We're going to take this to Pastor Brooks, who got a scripture well, that may take us to eight. We don't know, uh, we don't know. Sure, but we'll see. I don't know if I can birth this eight one. <laughs> but I know that Pastor Kendall can. All right. Uh, I love this verse of scripture. I love this verse of scripture. Psalms 34 and 4. I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all my fears. Notice, listen to the scripture. I sought the Lord. I didn't just say, hey, yo, Jesus, what's up? You know, I didn't just touch him. I didn't just take a moment. I sought the Lord. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I spent time. Mm -hmm. I gave effort to mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. And if you want to really be delivered from your fears, I just was thinking about this. Hey, God, wh why do we feel like you're obligated to be Santa Claus with us? Just we snap our finger, mm. push a button on a microwave. Y you need to come and rescue us from fear, rescue us from worry, rescue us from whatever. What about the fact that we are your children and we're obedient children, right? Mm -hmm. And we're faithful children mm -hmm. and we're peaceful children mm -hmm. and, and we're trusting you mm -hmm. and we're seeking you. Mm. And now, as a good father, you say, you know what? Don't worry about that. I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to deliver you mm -hmm. from your fear. Mm. I think it's just so important that as we're, we're going around this study tonight, that we realize that we must. You know, a lot of it's on us. It's on us. It's not on him. It's not on the Holy Spirit. The Word of God is there. It's solid. The Holy Spirit has done his job. Jesus has finished the salvation process. God the Father, he's got it all under control. What are we doing? What, what is our part in this? I think we really need to make a decision tonight. You know what I'm going to do? No matter what I'm going through, I'm going to seek the Lord. Mm. Whatever I'm going through, I'm going to read his word. Whatever I'm going through, I'm going to finish my night before I go to sleep with prayer mm. in faith, trusting him. Mm. I believe that's one of the secrets to overcoming fear mm. is seeking God. Because if we seek the Lord, he will answer us, the Bible says. He mm. will speak to us and he will bring us out of all of our fears. Mm. Amen. My, my, my. Where did the time go? Mm -mm. A lot of times the, the scripture says, my, did our hearts burn? <laughs> yeah. Open up the scriptures to us. We can see when you are you know, invested in scripture, having fun, that time can really slip by. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that Moses was in the presence of God and for 40 days it seemed like just one day. Mm. But I'm going to ask somebody, if you will, read uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Oh that will be our closing scripture for a moment uh, and expound on it, if you like. That's Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. And perhaps just give me about a minute to expound on that as you read it. Pastor Pete Paul. Uh, he, he's, he's looking for Okay, it. well, while he is searching out the scripture... Uh, let's say this. I'm there. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. okay, verse what? Six and seven. Yeah. Philippians chapter four, verse six and seven. Be careful for nothing. Mm. Be careful for nothing. But in yeah. everything, everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Mm -hmm. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, wow, mm -hmm. shall keep your hearts and minds 
through Christ Jesus. Jesus. And you know the end product is peace. Of all these things, be careful for nothing. When you do all that, it says the peace of God that passes all understanding. Wow. Amen. Amen. Mm. Amen. So you need that. You need that particular scripture there. Be anxious for nothing. Mm. Worry about nothing. But in everything, give God the glory, the praise, and thanksgiving for it. Mm. You've been watching Global Television Network. Look, we need your help. We ask that you would sow a seed, you know. I I'm sure there's something you could give in order to help us continue to push forward the message of Christ so that we may be able to reach the farther end of the earth. So please send it to Global Television Network, 300 Highway 68 South, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27409. Or tune in at www.gtvnetwork at, I mean, not at, dot, US. Let, again, www.gtvnetwork.us. Well, gentlemen, we know that some people have been watching, and, and, and perhaps there's somebody on the fence and look, what, you know, I want to give my life to the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I need one of you guys just to say a small prayer and, and perhaps invite them in. Okay. I'll be happy to. Go ahead, Pastor. Okay. Father, thank you, Lord. You know every one of us. Mm -hmm. You know every detail of our heart. Mm -hmm. You know every yes. detail of our life. Mm -hmm. And uh, we combine our faith and prayer tonight mm -hmm. for those that have watched, mm -hmm. for those that are still confused about worry and fear and faith. And I pray that something that has been said tonight will be a seed mm -hmm. planted in the heart yeah. of the of the viewer of the listener, and it will produce yeah. much faith not only in their own lives, but as they share it with others. So we pray a blessing over your word tonight. Mm -hmm. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We had a great time here on Global Television Network. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you for being a part of this network. Look at us on Facebook. Tune in. Um, you can look us up and talk to us. Thank you. If you don't know Jesus... Go to Romans chapter 8, verse 10, and read. All you have to do is ask and invite him to your life. I'm Pastor Washington. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching the Pastor's Study. The views expressed by our guests are their own and do not necessarily represent the views of the Global Television Network. If you enjoyed this program, please support the Global Television Network. Send your donations to 300 NC Highway 68 South in Greensboro. Or you can give online at gtvnetwork.us.